This is the Scoop for Tuesday. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is funding research at the University of South Florida to investigate viruses like the one that causes COVID-19. WMNF's Chris Young reports on a $3 million grant awarded to researchers to study how viruses spread between wildlife and humans. The research is led by Andrew Kramer, assistant professor in the Department of Integrated Biology at the University of South Florida. I think, rightly so, we spend lots of time thinking about human health and how our behavior impacts spread of disease. Uh, but we have to remember, you know, that, that we're not the only players here. With the grant, Kramer will examine how the virus spreads between wildlife and humans. He hopes this could help researchers understand other emerging diseases in the future. The virus that causes COVID-19 and and has led to so many issues for people also infects uh, more than 50 species of mammals. And what happens in those animals, um, it can hurt those animals, but it also can increase risk for humans uh, now and in the future. Kramer will work with Washington State University, IBM Research, and Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies. He calls it an ambitious project with a five-year timeline. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young. A federal judge has awarded more than $372,000 in legal fees to attorneys who represented professors in a high-profile lawsuit against the University of Florida over being able to serve as expert witnesses in court cases. A chief U.S. district judge last week rejected arguments by the university that it should not have to cover the fees and awarded fees to attorneys from two firms while also tacking on $1,575 in costs. Governor Ron DeSantis signed four bills yesterday passed during a special legislative session last week. One of the new laws expands state sanctions against Iran, a key backer of Hamas. Two other bills passed during the session carried a total price tag of $462 million. That included a wide-ranging package that will provide additional assistance in areas hit by Hurricane Idalia and provide $176 million to the My Safe Florida Home Program, which is designed to help people shore up their homes to better withstand hurricanes. Also, lawmakers passed a bill that will provide $25 million to bolster security at Jewish day schools and preschools and $20 million for the Division of Emergency Management to set up a program to fund organizations that, quote, are at high risk of violent attacks or hate crimes. Some Democrats also said historically black colleges and universities should be eligible for some of the money. Another measure signed by the governor is designed to make more school vouchers available for students with disabilities as demand for the scholarships has exceeded supply. The state of Florida is cutting ties with the American Library Association. A new ruling says that public libraries will no longer be allowed to participate in grant projects with the oldest library organization in the U.S., The rule change comes as conservatives criticize the group for its stance on book bans. Some library systems have already withdrawn their memberships from the ALA even prior to the rule, but many are still waiting for more guidance on how to respond to the recent change. Bill Logan with Manatee County Library says the Board of County Commissioners is in charge. They would have to digest whatever these new regulations or rules are and then prescribe whatever sorts of actions would be taken here on the local level. The ALA says that since 2021, they've directly awarded over $250,000 to the state's libraries. Florida businesses will see a decrease in workers' compensation insurance rates in 2024. The state Office of Insurance Regulation said yesterday it has approved an overall 15.1% rate decrease, which will take effect in January. That matches a 15.1% decrease requested in August by the National Council on Compensation Insurance, or NCII, which makes rate filings for the industry. For the weather, it's cool and cloudy in the Tampa Bay area. Highs today around 80, possible thunderstorms this afternoon. Overnight lows around 70. Tomorrow will be about the same with possible thunderstorms in the evening. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines on 88.5 FM and the WMNF app. This is The Scoop. Recorded at WMNF Tampa.